when you go back retrospectively and look at the city and where it was in, say, 1993 or 1994, we always thought we were a good place to live and a good place to raise a family. To be honest, we weren't a city worth visiting. We didn't have you know, any stuff that we were proud to show off. Anytime you travel, people would say, you know, ask where you're from. I'd say, I'm Oklahoma City, and I'd get this blank stare. You know, they just had no concept of what Oklahoma was. What corporate America was really searching for was the quality of life that Oklahoma City did not offer. Maps became something to hold on to and rally around, and, and it was like a rope. It was like, this could be a way out. This could be a way to build something that Will change things. When Ron Norick proposed maps in 93, and I remember thinking, penny sales tax, sure. I mean, try it, you know, because we were desperate. We were desperate to make something happen. Mayor Norick was the one who really carried the flag and said, let's take a different tack. Let's try to invest in our community as opposed to investing in a company. And so he came up with this inventive, creative package called maps. It's a penny on the dollar sales tax for a defined number of years with the city's promise that they will build projects and hopefully meet or exceed the citizens' expectations. The campaign theme was believe in our future, uh, kind of a corny theme, but it was really what we meant and that we were going to make tangible decisions, make real financial investments uh, to change the course of history in Oklahoma City. There were many doubters about whether or not you could really pull off something like this. And it wasn't until the first project, which was the ballpark, opened that people really believed it was going to happen. And the people entered that ballpark and saw that beautiful stadium, and saw that green grass, and saw those crisp, beautiful, new white uniforms. It was a new day. And the citizens, you could almost feel the exhale and the, the good feeling that everyone had that you know, this, this is good, this is gonna work. It's not an exaggeration to say, MAPS changed everything. MAPS for Kids, a, an act of political genius that my predecessor and some other civic leaders were able to put together to bring together in a consensus 24 school districts, an entire city council, and the business community. And so then we worked for three years with people around the city that cared about education. Kirks was a very important election. He had his own impact in terms of taking the city in another direction, and that was his belief that we needed to address the capital needs of the Oklahoma City public school system. And he led us in a brilliant way to get that done. So following Mayor Kirk Humphreys, Mayor Mick Cornett picked up the mantle and carried us forward into MAPS 3. What MAPS 3 has done has continued the momentum of MAPS 1 and MAPS for Kids. I think Mick's leadership has been as important as Ron's and Kirk's uh, in, in different ways, of course. But to maintain uh, a program that operates at such a high level is a difficult task, and he's done it very effectively. Three different mayors, three different times, three different skill sets, but all with the same message. We're all for making this investment. We're all for Oklahoma City. If there's a lesson to be learned about maps, it is that good things don't just happen. People have to make them happen. You know, it's not the bricks and mortar that maps did. It's the change of attitude of our community. Our kids and our grandkids are going to want to stay here. They're going to be able to find employment. They're going to raise families. Maps in Oklahoma City has been probably the most transformational event that has occurred in any major U.S. market. People have seen what Oklahoma City has become, and now they see young people flocking to a community that's got its act together.